But at the same time, we got to hold Boosie accountable, man. That was a stupid move. You could you could have sla- fake slapped the man. You know you on probation. What was the whole point of it? What was the point of really slapping somebody? It's not a good look. Boosie essentially got fired, dog. We keep saying social media ain't real life. <laughs> this nigga done got fired from two good jobs. <laughs> <laughs> because of this. Welcome to the show. I am King Cut. I am the original D. And this is Original Rap Podcast. Brr, brr, brr. Hey, welcome to the show. Episode 64. We got a packed show for y'all today, yes, man. Sir. A lot of stuff we got to break down today, man. Yeah, we're going to pull up with that. Brr, brr. <laughs> <laughs> y'all can see, man, we on one today, man. How you feeling, D? Feeling good, man. Yes, sir, man. Episode 64, man. We done came a long way, man. I was just thinking about this the other day, man. Watching episode one, I was like, man, what the fuck were we doing? Damn. <laughs> Damn, that shit, damn. Yeah, 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 yeah. Then uh, the ones after that, yeah. We done came a long way, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to keep going, too, man. We're trying to keep this shit strong. I don't know. I ain't told D yet, but D, I'm thinking about asking somebody to the show, bro. Word up. Yeah. What you think, what you think we should do? Think it should be a female, guy, black, white, Chinese? Uh, what you think we need? Think it should be a black woman. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, we need one of those, right? Yeah. Original Rap Podcast. So, podcast, so fuck it. Let's get this. I'm thinking I'm, I'm talking too much, man. Let's get into the good shit, man. Today we got um Lil Nas X got the internet going crazy with his new video. I got the internet going nuts. Yes, Flocka sir. Flocka Flocka getting a little, little backlash. Yeah, a little backlash on. Little backlash, a little bit of love. Uh, I don't know. Maybe warranted, maybe unwarranted. Mm-hmm. Boosie. Boosie. Boosie is. is Kicked off Instagram again. Again. One time with nine million um, followers, this time with a million followers. I got a problem with reason, you, Mark Zuckerberg. And the, and the reason why it's going to be kind of crazy. Y'all just want to sit around and listen to that. And then we got um, Rod Wave's new album. We want to really talk about that and how talented this kid is. Yes, sir. Talk about that new album, Soul Fly. And um, what else we got? Um, Yeah, man. We got a lot of stuff going on, man. Let's get right into it, man. On um, Bridge and Rap Podcast, episode 64. Finna kick it off right now. Let's get right into it. Um, I always let D choose where we start at, man. D, D, D the one that we choose where we go with this shit, man. Where you want to go with it? Um, Let's jump on the Waka Flocka situation. Okay, so break it down for us real quick. Um, Waka Flocka danced with his stepdaughter. A real daddy didn't show up. He stepped in, did the waltz with her. Um, Her girlfriend came to the dance with her. Whose girlfriend? His daughter, Charlie. Okay. Her girlfriend came. She's 16. Um, I, I don't know when she came out, but she's 16. She's openly homosexual. It was pretty recent. It was pretty recent? Yeah. I don't really keep up with it. Um, mm-hmm. I just felt, saw a storyline like, how are we recording your dad not show up and Walker Flock is just there in his suit ready to get the waltz on? I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, the internet went crazy. Like, oh my God, what a good father. Mm, forget the biologicals, forget the sperm donors. What a good father Waka Flocka is, and whoop the whoop. Mm-hmm. And then the dude, Zoe, you know who Zoe is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Zoe is the dude who always like act like he on the phone with the video, the mm-hmm. FaceTiming. Um, he's obviously a gay and he's a uh an Instagrammer. Yeah. Instagrammer. He's an Instagrammer, you know what I'm saying? A blogger, whatever you want to call it. He's you know, one of the people that get paid for getting attention. You know, you know how it is <laughs> nowadays. So, you know. Um, he has a big following, and he just said, it's funny how there's a double standard, and look at Waka Flocka and his daughter being gay, and what he had to say about Dwayne Wade's son, mm-hmm. and um, he, he basically spiraled that into a bigger point about the double standard with gay females and gay males, mm-hmm. and how it's accepted. Was this an audio or text, what he said? It was an Instagram video. Okay, He's an Instagram. I'm going to try to pull it up. You can keep going. You know, um, that's basically the gist of it. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, do you agree with him? How you feel about that there? No, nah, I disagree with it, but I feel I feel like I know exactly where it comes from. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I know exactly where it comes from. You know what I mean? Like, um, it comes from him being offended from something previous what he felt like um, Walker said, I guess. Um, not, just, not just the point about him being offended by what Walker said, but his overall point. There's oh, do a I double standard that? on how gay males are um, accepted and received versus how gay females are accepted and received. Mm, yeah, I, I agree with that, though. I think that's that's pretty true. Yeah. I, pre- I, feel, I agree with that. Um, I just feel like gayness is accepted so much now that there's a separation between 
gay females and gay males. At one point in time, it just all wasn't accepted. You just didn't talk about it. If you was gay, you just died old and alone with no family, whatever. You know what I'm saying? And times progressed. And now that it's just basically fully accepted at this point, gay males have to deal with what regular men have to deal with. That there's a favorable perception for women in a lot of situations over men. Mm -hmm. So like a gay man doesn't get viewed like a gay woman is similar to a broke man doesn't get viewed like a broke woman. So I think there is a double standard, but when it comes to men and women, I've always had this saying ever since I was young. I was like, I don't think there's a double standard. I just think there's a different standard. Men and women are different, even gay men and gay women. Okay. Just like broke men and broke women. You know what okay. I'm saying? Okay. Plenty of bitches broke. And they got the nerve to get on the internet talking about wanting a rich nigga. Can a nigga living at his mama house on the couch with no job, no car, uh, basically a homosexual needing a relationship to get out of his mama house, <laughs> can he open his mouth and say something like that? And require a require. woman to have money. No, it's, <laughs> it's different standards between men and women. And, and though it's not always fair... I think Zoe is just pointing out that, yeah, like gay men aren't received like gay women. But that's just how, you know, life has always worked. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was trying to find the audio for it. We can't find the audio for it. So, so yeah. So, um, but yeah, get back, get back into what you were saying, though. But, uh, um, yeah, I just think, I just think, you know, with men and women, certain things are just going to be received differently. You know what I'm saying? And now that the, uh, the gay lifestyle has been, I feel like it's fully accepted. The people who who don't accept it or, or say something different, they're generally shunned by society, right? So I just feel like that that pretty much means it's accepted, right? What, well, hold on. What, what do you mean? The people who, who don't accept it, they pretty much... Like oh, anybody that you. come out you. and say something negative about you. gay people that, or gay that relationships. Really count, though? Is that, does that really count as being accepted, though? I just feel like uh, overall it's accepted. Like yeah, if, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. If you disrespect somebody for, because of their lifestyle... You generally are looked at in the wrong and you have to apologize. Okay. So that to me that means it's accepted. Okay. So I, I just feel you. like now that it's accepted, we're past the point of accepting it. And and now a gay man is viewed as a gay man and a gay woman is viewed as a gay woman, not just y'all gay. So y'all all get the same treatment. So now gay women are getting different treatment from gay men. But like I said, it's just, you know. But I think I think I think the um the treatment before gay women and gay men been going on and been different. You know what I mean? Like everybody fantasizes about gay women. I mean, all straight men, but and it's it's been fine. All all a lot of the straight guys who bash gay men, they a lot of them fantasize about gay women, like being yeah, able to. Yeah, you know true what I mean? enough. But but it's still it's still the same thing though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. You feel me? Like it's just different perceptions. I think that's what Zoe's saying. Yeah, but I'm but what I'm saying is that's just a part of life. That's why oh, I brought I up you. a broke man versus a broke woman. You, there's a, there's no amount of arguing and crying a broke man could do to say, but yeah, look at her. She says she want a rich man and she demand a man with a job and his own place in his car and she broke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I think I think what the difference come in is is the is the is the um the bashing. You know what I mean? Of like you you you're a straight man but you you fine with um gay women, but you bash the men. Like I feel like you can be fine with gay women, but don't bash the gay guys. I feel like that's where the contradicting come in. That like if you was, if you was cool with gay women and just didn't say anything about gay guys, I think it'd be fine. But like I feel like you can't be like, man, that shit ain't. And then and then your points be contradicting it too. If it was just two gay men, wouldn't nobody be here. Well, if it was two gay women, wouldn't nobody be here either. You know what I mean? So uh, I, I don't know if that's true. I feel like the first human being was a woman mm -hmm. and I think she had to reproduce asexually. So I think that women are just so amazing that if every man died that they would, <laughs> uh, what's the word that they say in evolution? They would evolve and start reproducing asexually. Yeah, okay. That's what I think. I got you. I don't think we can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I yeah, think yeah. that's the end of Earth if it's two men. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think women can just keep going without us. They don't need us. Mm -hmm. It's big, stupid. But I, get, I guess that I, I get I get what Zoe's trying to say. You know what I mean? Like I'm I'm the type of person. I that get it too, but I just still feel like that's just the way it is. Like there's there's a different standard on how you like uh, we don't expect a woman to hold the door. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We don't expect a woman to take out the trash. Right, right, right. You know what I'm saying? Um, Darren, I just did some roll shit. I'm sorry, ladies. Sorry. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's just it's just different expectations and different standards. People say double standards. I just think it's different standards. And I just think that's one of them situations where gay men get the short end of the stick. You know what I'm saying? There's going to be situations where gay women get the short end of the All stick. All right. Can I, can I challenge you to give an example right now? Where, where gay women get the short yeah, end yeah, of the yeah. stick? Uh, all the time. Uh, if, if we're going into... 
but, gay but women that's time, living as a man. You see what I'm saying? You talking about the guys that the, the ones that want to be men? Like the stud type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not the just ones that want to, I wouldn't say that word, but I was saying the ones that uh, want to be that, men. Is that derogatory? Oh, no. And Tampa is not. We yeah, just, it's not. Yeah, we just say you that. You know what I'm saying? I know somebody nicknamed Lil Stud. So <laughs> I, I, if that's derogatory, y'all from Missouri and Tampa is just a regular yeah, yeah, word. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But um, like, you know, they, they get the short end of the stick a lot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I just don't want to bring up stuff, but but in their life, especially in relationships, when they're dealing with women, because uh, a lot of times women that are, are attracted to a stud, obviously are attracted to men too. Right. So a lot of times they get women that's playing both sides and that's not genuinely yeah, gay. Yeah, yeah. But so. I, that's that's what I'm saying. I, I don't think that equates to to the how unfair it is for a guy his sexuality to be bashed when the other person is doing the same thing and it's being uplifted. Well, don't, I don't bash him. That's all I'm listen, saying. It's fine if you well, don't, well, don't listen, talk shit about him. I don't think it's fair that a grown ass man that's not doing nothing for himself is broken, homeless, and got to depend on his mama for a place to stay. Where a grown ass woman that's not doing nothing for herself get an apartment and uh, money every month allotted to her because she has right. some babies. It's just like that. that right, there's right, right, different. Right. You know what I'm saying? Gives and takes with with each. You know what I'm saying? Different. Yeah. But yeah, with the different sexes, like you know what I'm saying. So yeah, yeah. But I'm with you though. Like I do. I agree with Zoe on that situation. I'm gonna say kind of. I think I think what he's saying is true, but yeah, I yeah, think yeah. it's but what I'm saying is I think it's just a part of life and something gay men gonna have to deal with. Yeah. Just like it's, cer- you know it's what certain what double mean? standards that that we can't do nothing about. That's what I think. There's certain double standards you can't do nothing about. And and now let's jump to Walker Flocker. The video that I saw, Walker Flocker didn't say nothing. No, he didn't. Unless we unless we didn't see a video, unless we didn't find well, the, the correct video. The video I saw, uh, Fee shared it. Gossip of the city shared mm-hmm. it. So I'm pretty sure it's the correct video. And all Flocker said was um. When they said they brought up Dwayne Wade and his son only being 12 and identifying um, as a female and, and that being too young, Walker Flocker basically cut the guy off and said, I'm not going to tell nobody how to raise their child or deal with their child. The only thing I will say is, why does your child's sexuality have to be a headline? Mm-hmm. He never said nothing negative about um, Dwayne Wade's son wanting to be identified as a girl and now is identified as a girl. Um, Zaya, right? Is Zaya? That's what. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. See what I'm saying? So he never, he never passed any judgment about that. So that's where I, that's where I push back against Zoe. Like you kind of just drug Walker Flocker and his 16 year old stepchild and her sexual sexuality into like the social media headlines for no reason because Flocker didn't even say nothing derogatory about that child mm-hmm. or about him being gay. I want to be identified as a girl or about his age. He said that's not my. I'm not going to say nothing about. Nobody in their child in the age. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people uh, felt like it was too young. I think Boosie made the situation some it wasn't. Boosie made people discuss whether 12-year-olds should be having uh, sex changes. And that's <laughs> that's not what was going I on. The, I, I think I got the, the Walker audio right here. Let me see. See, uh, wild out on, uh, on your on Dwayne Wade. What, what, what do you think about that? Because a lot of people, I'm getting a lot of questions. They want to they want Walker's like reaction to Dwayne Wade's cutting his... Uh, uh, son dig off or some shit. If it was any wrong in it, I'll just say stop plastering it like a kid's a superhero. I mean, a kid is twelve, right? Yeah, it's a kid. Like, I, why don't I you wait until the kid? No, nah, can I can't. It. I'm, I'm not going to tell nobody to wait and how to how to deal with your kids and anybody's sexuality. I'll just say like, why is it so? Why is it headlines about? It? Yeah, this is crazy. <laughs> like, Pause it. What if somebody- uh are they not making his stepdaughter's sexuality a headline? They was. They that's exactly what they was doing. Hmm. And I agree with him a hundred percent on that point. Like why? But he's he doing it. <laughs> Isn't he doing it? Walker. Yes. That, no. He that's what that. I mean. He didn't do that. Yes. The little girl's sexuality was a part of. That's why he's getting backlash because his stepdaughter is gay and her girlfriend came to the dance and that was on. This all this happened on some show. But this ain't this ain't something he did, is it? Oh, it's his show. Right. I got you. I got you. Know you. What I'm saying I don't know if I it's, it's love and hip hop. I got you. It's the show. No, I think he got another show. He got another show. Obviously, we don't watch that shit. I think he. I think he got on um, something. The Flockers or something like that. I don't know what yeah. it is, but but he sent up there saying, "Why is your child's sexuality a headline?" And this whole episode revolved around one, her dad, but two, also her sexuality. I got you. Mm. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. I got you. Um. I just. I'm. I'm just going. Yeah. To, they show called Meet the Flockers. Okay. See what I'm saying? Like you just kind of did that, bro. 
You just kind of did what you're saying, so. Okay, I got you. We we not what you said was right, but it is kind of. But you turn around and do you. it three months later. I got you. Hmm. So now I don't feel so bad that you got dragged into this whole topic oh, about no, the double though, standards. Because that's different, though. I think I think they doing their show, which is which is basically they filming their life. You know what I mean? I think that was just part of it. I don't think. So I was they're showing everything on that show. I always got to break cut down and, and show them how. <laughs> I tell them behind the scenes, the Kardashians like sit down and plan out their tweets. So this is a whole, like me, you just do this by yourself. Yeah. They got a whole cast of producers and writers and you don't think they sat down and thought the gay community. That's probably part of it. You see what I'm saying? That's part of it. But what I'm saying is. He's using this child sexuality for headlines. I think that definitely came up in the meeting room when they were talking about possibilities. and Because to me, I think this whole um, little shindig was scripted. The father not being there and him, like I said, him stepping in and always being ready and having practice of dance moves. You can't moves. do that. You can't do that, though, D. Because that kind of like discredit his 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 good gesture as being some, something probably. It's, it's for TV, yes. No, you can't do that. Yes. Now I'm not saying his um love for his stepdaughter is for TV. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying this whole setup to where she was expecting her real father to come and Flocka had to come in and be the. Step down. Okay, I got I think you. that's all kind of a bit for TV. I got you. I got you. You know you. what I'm saying? I got you. I got you. Yeah, yeah. So I, it's just all plays into head selling your child's sexuality for headlines. I, so. I got you on that. Yeah. Kinda, I got you on that. Kind of cold devil for that, Flocka. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Bridging the Route podcast. Yes, yeah, sir. You did, you, did, you, did you get everything out on that? I think, uh, we, I think we did well. I, right. I got to make one last point. I'm going to go off on a bit of a tangent. Give me a second here, cut. So in this situation where he was asked about somebody else's child, he probably should have just said no comment. And in the past, if you watch us, I have gone off about people like Boosie, right. people like Meek Mill, right. just running your mouth and talking about stuff that has nothing to do with you, whether you're asked or not. Like, what happened to that's none of my business? You know what I'm saying? Or what right, happened? Right, 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 and, right. and then a lot of times in these situations, they don't even have to say that because they're volunteering this on social media. And this time he was asked, but I just wanted to, to bring up a story. I saw, I saw this on Vlad TV. I think it was funny. And I think I want to share it. And it just shows you to not run your mouth about people for no random reason. Okay. Aerie Spears. You know who Aerie Spears yeah, is. Yeah, exactly. So when he went on Vlad TV this one time, he talked about Key and Peele. Michael Key, Jordan Peele. He said the black community didn't pick them. Uh, white people like them. And it's not a coincidence that they both have white wives. He said this unprovoked. Vlad didn't ask about it. He just described Michael Key and Jordan Peele like this. After that interview, Get Out comes out. Now Jordan Peele is the man in Hollywood. So this same guy, Ari Spears, gets an audition. He goes in to read for a script. Who's he reading for? Jordan Peele and a desk full of white you dudes. The, you got the fucking nerve Jordan to even Peele show Jordan Peele and a desk full of white dudes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he put himself in that situation because he was running his mouth about something that had nothing to do with him. You don't have to do that, bro. <laughs> like, if it don't got nothing to do with you, just don't speak on it. Like, right, 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 right. That's that shit normal, go, But bro. D, that shit go on a lot in the, in the industry. Hey, you know that's why I just brought up that story because it was just perfect. Like, bro, yeah, you yeah, talking yeah. about this man, his that white shit wife. Going a lot. That's another topic, though. That's another topic. That's another topic. Bridge and Rap Podcast. Brr, BTR. What's up, man? Um, where we at? Where we at? Where we at? Where we at? I want to see where you want to go at, man. Um, Dude, you, I you, think, you, you feeling uh, it today, we bro? We kind of in this realm. You, you feeling know, like it today? To, I like to latch one subject to the next one. But they segue. Call it segue. <laughs> I like to segue. So since we're on this, let's get into your boy Little Nas X. Yes, sir. So Little Nas X has released his new video. Mm. I don't know how, how do you pronounce the name of it? Montero. Montero. I uh, think is Montero. that his, I think that's his real name. Oh or, yeah. Or if that's not his real name, that's what he refers to himself as. Okay. Because he pinned the letter to 14-year-old Montero to himself. Okay. So okay. Got a lot of backlash going on on it, man. It's a mm. very demonic, dark video. Um, a lot of people are having issues with how the video played out. Well, I'm just gonna say that's a part of the video where Lil Nas X is giving a lap dance to the devil. Mm. You know what I mean? You can take that however you want to take it. And um, the internet blew up on it. Um, a lot of people was talking about how um, stuff like this is going to influence our kids and it's pushing the whole, the whole, um, what's the word I'm looking for, D? What's the word I'm looking agenda. for? Agenda. The whole agenda on the kids, bro. Mm. And um, D, man, you the man, you the perfect man to talk to about this stuff because I know you pretty strong on this whole agenda being pushed up. Like, is this is this one of the things that you talk about all the time? Um, he said he is pushing an agenda. He came out, he released a tweet. I don't believe him though. And he said he's pushing an agenda. I think he is. I said love Twitter. 
little Twitter. <laughs> I think he is pushing an agenda, but I think it's um a sarcastic right poke back right at the things that he felt as a gay male growing up. Um, like there's a lot of symbolism in the video. In the video, an uh, angel falls out the heavens and almost looks like like slides down on the slipper uh, stripper pole and turns into this red devil. The hair gets braided red and he ends up in hell dancing with the devil, giving mm-hmm. the devil a lap dance. So um, I think what he's doing is, is poking back at religion, poking back at society that says, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's the way of the devil. It's the way of open rebellion. Um, a lot of gay people are still Christians. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I remember... Chris Broussard catching backlash four or five years ago on ESPN because he was saying he don't think that gay people can be Christians and get into heaven because what he called it was living in open rebellion. If the Bible say don't do it and you're doing it, how can you, you know, in turn say you're mm-hmm. a Christian? Um, obviously, I'm not a Christian because I fucked some Mr. and Mrs. Crabs up last <laughs> night. That's also in the Bible as an abomination, just like homosexuality. So uh, I guess I was dancing with the devil last night, eating them crab legs. <laughs> but baby, whoo! Things was good. I actually got a little bit left in the refrigerator. I can't wait to get home and heat them up. Uh, but you know what I'm saying? I think I think what he's doing is exactly what people are saying. Oh, look at this, though. This is, this is a recent tweet by Lil Nas X. Somebody tweeted Lil Nas X, my kids will never play Old Town Road again. I'm still debating about wearing Nike after this. Come in Nike. I mean, come Nike. Uh, drop. On, I guess she's saying, come on, Nike. A drop of blood for real. And then Lil Nas X responds back. They shouldn't be playing Old Town Road anyway. We stream, we streaming. Call me by by your name now. So, what you think about that, D? Uh, break down the drop of blood for the people real quick. Okay, yeah. So Nike is is releasing the uh, Nike and Nas S has collabed and released the Air Max, which has some. It has actual fluid in the bottom of the the, the air pocket on the Air Max, and it's a red fluid. And every pair of the shoes actually have a, a drop of human blood in it. Which I think is false. I think it's false too. Yeah, I don't obviously. believe that too. It's not a real that's, drop and that's, of blood. That's, that's what I want to get. I want to get my take on this shit. I feel like all of this shit is kind of like orchestrated, man. Like, I think Lil Nas X know he can get people in an outrage by just doing certain stuff like doing the video where he's doing the whole giving a lap dance to the devil. You know what I mean? It's a whole conflict of interest with the whole sexuality and, and religion. You know what I mean? It's so simple. It's just a simple thing to get people outraged and sit back and laugh and have y'all talk about my shit. My shit got 14 million views in a day. You know what I mean? And without me telling y'all what's going on, without nobody even really talking about Lil Nas X like that. You know what I mean? Um, and with the shoes, like a, a drop of blood in the shoes, why? Like for what? You know what I mean? And I, th- I think it's deeper than a, uh, like attention grab, money grab. Like I think he's strategically, sarcastically taking on all his criticisms. And that's the symbolatry of the video. Everything in that video is what people are saying about Lil Nas X anyway. You're pushing an agenda. Mm-hmm. You're influencing our kids to do the wrong thing. Woo the woo the woo. And I think he's taking that on and saying, yeah, you're right. You know what I'm saying? I want your child to be okay with being gay if they're gay. And I think uh, he's doing it in a very uh, confrontational, controversial way, which leads into what you're saying, like it's going to sell. It's going to get attention. But I think it's meaning behind what he's doing. I don't think he actually worships the devil. No, 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 no. Uh, I think he just, I think there's a meaning behind what he's doing. Um, and so, yeah, I think, I think he, it's all just to, like I just said, just to get people to just talk about it and get people outraged for a little bit of time. That's shit, man. They say six nine was watching that video like, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, how do you feel about Nike doing a whole collab with him? With the whole um, drop in the blood situation? Nike's not doing that. Nike is not gonna, no. <laughs> <laughs> like this whole, this whole, uh, I don't know. I don't know because they got the whole, they might be on it. They got the, the, the air mats right here. Let me see. Luke 10, 19, Luke 10, 18 stamped on there. They got the, um, they made 666 pairs, 666. Pull that up. Pull up, Luke. Eight. That's a Bible verse? Let me see. Oh, let's Pull that up. up. Pull that up. <laughs> see what he's talking about. We finna investigate this shit, yeah. <laughs> Luke 10, 18. Um, got a small one right here. And he said to them, I beat hell Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Is that the whole thing? Ooh. And he said unto them, 
I beheld Satan as lightning fell from the fell from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on on serpents and scorpions, and over all the power of enemies, and nothing shall be. And it cuts off there. So, so it sounds like that Bible verse is saying, "Behold, Satan." Right. Hmm. <laughs> Whoo! Yeah, and these these pairs. We're gonna try to uh, upload a picture of the shoes. It's only six hundred and sixty pairs made. Six six six. So about the little demonic stuff going on. I think it's all just cap, just to get attention. And um, I, I just question like, what Nike? Why why would Nike um get okay to this? It's all about the dollar sign. Um, I think they saw dollar signs. That, that, why six hundred sixty six pairs? And you don't have to do that. True, but they cost a thousand bucks a piece. Yeah, and then they do. They cost a thousand bucks, and that's another thing. I think they cost. I think they cost ten thousand eighteen dollars for the ten eighteen. Let me check. One thousand eighteen. One thousand eight. I said ten thousand. Damn. Damn. <laughs> yeah, I think they cost one thousand eighteen dollars for the ten eighteen again. Who? What, we, what are we getting from this, man? Uh I don't know. Like, like you said, I don't know. I'm on the fence. Is it just an attention grab, a money grab? Um. I wonder how, like, I wish we had a, a go-to gay guy or female <laughs> and see how they feel about this because I know some gay people probably feel a way about him aligning his homosexuality with the devil, um, mm -hmm. with Satan. You know what I'm saying? Because there's plenty of people who are gay who, who who ain't on those, you know what I'm saying, who ain't, who ain't feeling like, well, God doesn't love me. Uh, I'm dancing with the devil. They they may feel like, no, um, your, your, your religion is man-made. My creator loves me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So I don't, I'm pretty sure there's a, a huge section of the of the gay culture that don't like him aligning being gay with that, with the symbolatry he's oh, aligning that's another thing. With. That's a good point you just made. You know what that's I'm saying? That's a good point you just made too, bro. That's another way he, he's offending people that he don't even have to. Like in the, I got you. That makes sense too. That's a good point. I never thought of it that way. Lil Nas X, man. Check out this um video. Do you, like, we don't talk about this too though. Like, the whole agenda thing. You believe in it? You think it's real to, to to increase the chances of kids being gay? Or do you think they just want the whole people who are gay to be more accepted? What do you think the whole agenda is about? Mm -hmm. Making people, making the kids more gay or be comfortable around it? Or do you think they are, are to be comfortable around it just to let people know that to bring awareness like to it? Like the old folks say, it's something in the water. They weren't just saying that. That's a fact. It's a fact. It's not a it's, fact, but... Oh, no, it's a fact. You can pull it up right now. You got your computer open. It's a fact about what? There's a chemical in our drinking water called azine that effeminizes the male. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm usually more professional than this. Wow, this is the gate code from my old apartment. No, I ain't letting you in. I don't even stay there <laughs> no more. That, um, but the, um, that's different, though. But I think, no, no, I think, no, 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 listen. There's a chemical. I even know the name of the chemical. The chemical is called azine. Mm -hmm. A-Z-I-N-E. You can mm -hmm. pull it up. A brother by the name of Tyrone. Listen, that's his first name. Tyrone. This is a personal. This is a real person. I forget his last name, but he's a professor at Berkeley. He did a study and he proved that azine turned male tadpoles into females mm -hmm. to the point where they can reproduce eggs. And it's in our drinking water. Tadpoles. Tadpole. They do experiments on animals, bro. The shit okay. you eat, the shit you put in your hair, they wash it on a rat first. So let's not do that. <laughs> okay? Right, it's yeah. bad in the European nations. Okay. But it's in our water. I know your old folks been telling you some in the water. <laughs> old people said a lot of stuff we thought they just said, and it's true. That's um, crazy, though. That's so crazy. Hey, hey, I'm confident in what I'm saying. Pull it up. <laughs> AZ, I told you how to spell it. No, I was talking about the old folks. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, put it together. And we, th we thought that was just crazy, bro. Remember what was the another, old folks told you, I, bro. I that shit going to come to fruition. Because you know the old folks be having them sayings. I thought it was another yes. slick saying. It always something in the water. But you know I, I mean? tell you, bro, I learn stuff all the time, and I be like, damn, them old folks was right. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? They just so cut and dry with it. You right, think they don't right, know right. they're talking about your old right. country ass. Right. Say, man, what's wrong with these kids? It's something in that water. All right, so but what the question though that I ask. The Do agenda. I think it's an agenda the being agenda. pushed? What's the what's the purpose of the agenda, you think? I don't know the purpose of it. Is it that, to is it to get the gay culture um bring awareness to them and get them more accepted? Or is it to manipulate our children and make our children become? <laughs> well, listen. <laughs> I know for a fact that they use the media to control the way people think. 
Do you want to go back to what what's, that called? what's that called? What's that called? They called it something, an experiment. What they called it? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Fuck. But I know that Confucius himself said, you know, smart people like to quote Confucius. Confucius himself said, <laughs> he, facts, he who controls imagery controls the mind. Mm. Confucius said that. So it's a fact. So when people say that they're pushing an agenda, I think that's almost a fact. But like you said, it's what is the purpose of that? Is it something sinister to turn your child homosexual? Or is it just something that, that, that make your child grow up not thinking a way about somebody who's gay? Like, mm -hmm. oh, he's gay. I'm not even thinking twice about that. How you doing, sir? Whoop the whoop. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Did you answer the question? <laughs> you asked me what's in the agenda first. And I'm just saying... By definition, <laughs> yes, there is an agenda. My answer is, it is an agenda, but I think, I can't, it may be an agenda. And I think if it is agenda, I have faith into my, my, I have faith in whoever, the higher what, power. What, the history of America? I what, have the faith government? in the higher power that they wouldn't just try to make our kids gay. I don't see the benefit in it. So Bruh. it has to be, so what's the benefit in Listen. having everyone gay? It was it, it's slaves that could have said I have faith in the higher power <laughs> <laughs> that we ain't gonna work and die and get whipped and wait. You know what I'm saying? It's just kind of tough to write it off to the higher power when somebody else on earth is in charge making these decisions. No, I mean higher power as in the ones here, like the ones in charge of everything. Oh, now nah, you tripping now. Nah. You know that so, no good. So I think I think because like if you if you if you do that, if you if you have no faith in the people that run everything, I feel like that's a scary life to live. You know what I mean? I know it ain't. Yes, it is. Like what? Like when you learn it initially, it's scary, right? See, I've been woke since I was like thirteen. So I'm. When you learn it, it's scary, and then you get to this point of worrying and wanting to change things. Then you get to this point of acceptance and like, well, all I got to do is stay high and die. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was living stay every day before. <laughs> yeah, I was living every day before. I'm still gonna live every day after this. But no, nah, man, them people up top ain't right. <laughs> Ain't right, bro. <laughs> All right, so so before we get off the topic with the Lil Nas S hit, are they overreacting? What people overreacting? Is the internet overreacting? Um, it's the internet being the internet. Yeah, I don't the think internet. the internet overreacting because he pulled strings. He did what he did for mm -hmm. the reaction. I yeah, think yeah. the internet's uh, reaction is appropriate. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Okay, I agree with you. Brr. I agree with you on that. Prison the rap podcast. I feel like we. I feel like we're cooking today a little bit. Cooking, sizzling. Um, Let that sizzling your spirit. <laughs> Let that sizzling your spirit. So, Lil Boosie. <laughs> My boy Boosie, man. He done, got, he done got kicked off Instagram once again, man. One time at 9 million followers. This time at a million followers. Um, when he did it on, when he did the, I don't know if you, you seen, put your pussy lips online, I give you $1,000. Mm -hmm. That was the first time he got kicked off. Mm-hmm. He, he he was real big on Instagram. He had a, it was a good time too at that that around that time. It was the um the um quarantine had done kit dog. He was entertaining us. Had mm -hmm. women coming on there dancing. Boosted personality is very funny. You, you know what I mean? It was a nice time. But um Facebook and Mark Zuckerberg did not agree with what was going on on that ratchetness. Mm. All that ratchetness was was going on. They didn't like it. So Boost got kicked off. Um, Boosie went on the tangent talking about Mark Zuckerberg. He got to the point one time where he said he was going to sue him because he messing up his money. Mm. If you follow Boosie on Instagram, Boosie do a lot of work on that Instagram. Yes, sir. Boosie, Boosie done sold like a thousand products. Nine million followers. <laughs> Woo. Boosie, Boosie go sell your products. So um, he got kicked off Instagram, bro. Came back with the, um, built, built up another page, the new Boosie IG. Got up to a million. This time he's promoting a song with the baby. It's called Period. Which is a trash song to me. You heard it? No, I haven't heard it. Yeah, that shit trash. Really? Yeah. I could try to pull it up real quick. A little piece of it. No, nah, I don't want no no copyright and I need all my coins. <laughs> I love you, Boosie, but not enough to give you a cut. All right. Yeah, so the period video, you know what I mean? Him and him and the baby. Booster goes on Instagram and he's telling people, he 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 tells people, he posts, I got $554. Why is it $554? I don't know. But he got $554. <laughs> Damn, that's random as hell. <laughs> they had to sink in. <laughs> I got $554 for anybody who let me, who come on, who who let me slap the fuck out of them. That's what Booster said. That sounds just, that just sounded like Booster. Yeah. So I guess he found somebody. Uh, he posted behind the scenes of him actually shooting the video. I guess the, the slap was supposed to be in the video. The guy was supposed to come up talking shit to Boosie, and Boosie just slapped the fuck out of him. And it happened. 
Um, and I, I, it sounds funny. It sounds funnier than the whole idea of it sounds funny. I'm finna pay somebody five hundred fifty dollars and let me slap. It sounds funny, but when you see the video and Booster slap the fuck out this dude, <laughs> you kind of like, damn, Booster, why you did that? No, he looked like a drunk uncle to me. Yeah, I think he finna get fucked up. I think he yeah. he finna have a good time with yeah, that five fifty four. Yeah, 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 yeah. He looked the drunk when he was getting. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Slap. Like, he had to get drunk first to get yeah, slapped. Yeah, So, Boosie, uh, Boosie slap shit out the man, dog. Uh, and my question is, dog, is Boosie doing too much with that shit, man? Why didn't he just fake slap, dog? I don't get why he didn't just do the fake slap. Uh, my question is, why Mark Zuckerbucker <laughs> doing Boosie like that? Why you doing Boosie boo like that, man? Man trying to eat. Hoes on that. Boosie, Boosie was on probation, man. And Boosie doing the most, man. man like... Hoes on there literally selling ass. <laughs> no exaggeration, not being funny, not dissing y'all. Hoes on there selling ass, man. <laughs> and you messing with Boosie Boo? Yeah. Dog, I just feel like he's stepping on that man. Toes, bro. We got, listen, man. We are unfairly censored on social media, man. <laughs> they told my song. And then, I don't know if y'all heard the period song. The period song, the beat sound exactly like Shug. And, and it sound like the new Boosie that we don't really fuck with musically. On the Shug beat. It just seemed like it seemed like Boosie trying to beat the baby so bad, bro. Like he out here slapping, <laughs> he out here slapping niggas. Don't, <laughs> don't do Boosie. Boo. Boosie is a legend, bro. And the crazy thing, dog, I'm gonna try to play the audio, man. And the baby slap bitches. Yeah, yeah, that's the difference. That's yeah, the <laughs> but I wanna, I wanna try to play the audio of the slap, dog, because the dude went lying what he said to Boosie. <laughs> nah, don't hate on Boosie, boo. Man, D, you got to keep it real, bro. I love Boosie, man. I love Boosie, but we got to keep it real. I can't tell. <laughs> I love Boosie, dog. We got to keep it real, though, man. But Boosie don't slap the shit out of this dude, bro. I'm going to try to play the audio for y'all real quick. That's it. Uh, you want to eat punk ass rappers? You can't rap. Um, how you going to tell me you a goddamn rapper? That was nice. That was nice. That was nice. So you don't you don't agree with Boosie again? Um, deleted off Instagram. No, Mark Zuckerberg doing too much, bro. Like let the man live, bro. Your argument is because it's people selling ass. It's people selling ass, and I see a fight every time I get on Instagram. He just slapped the nigga, and the nigga got paid for it. They have slap fest competitions on Instagram, like people. Come on, bro. Like, how, how can you justify taking away that man money like that, bro? Like, we just got to get our own platform, bro, because we unfairly censored on that motherfucker, bro. Damn. I told you why I'm coming on Worldstar. I told you how they did me on Worldstar, dog. <laughs> what happened? Tell the story. Man, so listen, man. You know when you go in the Worldstar comment section, <laughs> it's racist as hell. It's like five, six years ago. That's like the top racist place in the world. Racist as hell. <laughs> Nigger this, nigger that, black bitch. I'm talking about so well racist. Well this, food stamps this. Right, so <laughs> somebody crazy. was on there saying uh, black people are monkeys. Black No, or black people are cavemen, caveman ass niggas. So I brought up the scientific fact that the people of the continent from Africa are the only beings on earth that don't have caveman genomes in their DNA. That is a scientific fact. Oh, you went scientific fact. on them. I, that's all you I put. scientific on them. And then I put the caveat that that means white people are more monkeys than niggas. Right? And I got banned, bro. <laughs> One comment in the history of World Star. That was my comment, bro, when I got banned. And when you go on there, you see so much racism against black people. We are unfairly censored on social media because now it gives the voiceless a voice. Mm. Now, Boosie might be the wrong candidate, you hear me, to... to uh, Use as a face for this fight, but we are unfairly censored on social media because it gives niggas sitting on his couch in the middle of Tampa a voice that he can possibly put on the interstat internet and send out the millions, bro. So they unfairly censor us. That's a real thing. Boosie didn't deserve to get his IG deleted. We need to band together with the brother. You know what I'm saying? Another free Boosie campaign or something, and get him back. Get him back to the original with nine million strong, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I somewhat agree with you. I, I feel like this, this wasn't warranted for him to get deleted for that. But at the same time, we gotta hold Boosie accountable, man. That was a stupid move. You could, you could have sla fake slapped the man. You know, you on probation. What was the whole point of it? What was the point of really slapping somebody? It's not a good look. Boosie essentially got fired, dog. We keep saying social media ain't real life. <laughs> this nigga done got fired from two good jobs. <laughs>
<laughs> because of his behavior, dog. Hey, at some point, we got to stop saying social media ain't real life, dog. That's just a big chunk of real life. You hear me? Damn, that's tough, bro. That is tough. Right, right, right. <laughs> Boots out here wild and man, slap the fuck out, dude, bro. This is the rap podcast, bro. BTR. I want to see what Boosie do next, man. What he gonna do? He gonna he gonna he, he might well just stay on Twitter. Twitter let that shit rock, man. But everybody want to be on Instagram, bro. I don't know, and I don't know, dog. And the money oh, ain't you even gave, on you Instagram gave a good, yet. You gave a good option what he can do. What he can do, D? Take that shit to YouTube, bro. He can't slap nobody on YouTube though. Why? I see world star compilation fights and nah, that shit gone. You don't remember back in the day that shit used to be crazy on there. That shit ain't on there like that no more. I think YouTube just more age since so I think you can do what you want. I just think your content will be limited into who they show it to, and you got to be 18 and signed in. I think YouTube will better move him, especially since he can do stories. A story is essentially an a IG clip, dog. Wait till we get them stories, dog. Ain't even for them be on Instagram. <laughs> Nigga don't get paid for that. You feel me? Wait till we get them. St- get our subscribers up, Duke. <laughs> we need we need to get the stories. We're gonna turn Instagram out, man. You yes, feel sir. me? Yes, I mean, I'm sorry. We're gonna turn YouTube out, man. You feel me? Yes, sir. Brr, the rap podcast. Let's get into this Rod Wave, man. Rod Wave just dropped right. a real dope album, bro. And dope interview. I, I don't know if it's a dope interview or it's just his first in-depth open to the mm-hmm. public interview where people yeah, got yeah, to yeah, 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 see yeah, yeah, him, yeah. see his mannerisms, yeah. hear how he think. Yeah. You know what I'm I really, saying? I really, yeah, I, that was a really good interview. I wish it was longer, bro. I kind of wish it was longer. Uh, what did you take from it? I took something from it, dog. Um, Made me like Rod a little more. I didn't really take much from it. I always knew he was a humble dude. I always knew he was smart. Mm-hmm. Um, so I didn't really take much from it. I just really appreciated just how he just broke everything down, how everything made sense yeah. and was concise with it. Like, I just I just really appreciate just hearing him talk. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but what did you got from it? Um, I connect, this is the Breakfast Club interview we talking about. The Breakfast Club interview. I kind of connected with Rod because we are similar in a way. Uh, if you know you know me, cut. You yeah. can speak on me. I'm not a social person, right? Mm-hmm. I would go as far as to say I'm anti-social. <laughs> like I don't go out. I don't hang with people. Uh, you know, people don't come over to the crib and chill. Like if I want some company, I might pull up on Cuzzo and smoke or something. You know what I'm saying? I know it's probably a ton of niggas in Tampa that think I'm funny acting or I got a problem with them. I'm, I'm just not social, bro. You know what I'm saying? If I hurt your feelings, hit me up on IG. I'll pull up and smoke with you when I feel like having some company. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. But I'm not a social person, but the thing about that is it's hard to get respect for not being, for, for being antisocial when everybody says I'm antisocial. So when, when people, when I say that, people don't respect the fact that I have issues with my social skills. If there's 10, 15 people in the room, I might not know how to communicate. If I don't know you, I might not be comfortable communicating with you. Like, I'm literally anti-social. Yeah. But everybody says it. It's a cool thing to say. And I feel like that's what Rod is going through because every rapper says they anti-social and have 80 niggas in a, in a, in a video and got a song with every rapper in the game. He's mm-hmm. really turning down songs with rappers because he's honestly anti-social. And he talked about how he ran into, po- he seen Polo G at the jury store and he yeah, turned yeah. around like, oh damn, they're going to rap her. And he <laughs> turned away and Polo G had to approach him like, yo bro, I fuck with you. And, and like, he, the energy and like, right, uh, he received it well, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I feel like, I feel his struggle because he's actually anti-social in the industry where every rapper says, I don't fuck with niggas and there's 30 niggas behind him like this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's where I feel like I connected with him and oh, I yeah. understand him, you feel me? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, definitely cool to see him open up a little bit and, you know, because he don't really do interviews, though. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and then he just dropped this dope album, Soul Fly. Soul Fly. All right, man, you could just put it in and just let it rock. Can um, I ask you what made you turn that corner? Because I see... Way? Yeah, I see a lot of people in the comments that say, I didn't fuck with him at first, but this nigga hard enough. And that's, you You never thought he sucked, but you wasn't on him like like you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like, it's, it's, it's kind of like, to me, it's it, it's kind of like those artists I never really be drawn to. Like um, like when Lucha was, like, it's, I, I put him in that whole category with like the Lucci, the um, the Rich Homie Quans, and even the, um, the, the, the Rez Deshaun, Deshaun Derez or whatever yeah, his name Derez is. Yeah, Deshaun. Rock Wave. Like, it was a time where locally around in Tampa, like, people would just, that's all they would rock. That's all they would rock. And I understand these people are good, but I just don't really like the emotional music too much. I, I think something's wrong with me, probably how I grew up, but I don't really be liking that whole vibe too much. But I always, from a, from a even not really like, like just being locked in on Rod Wave, like that, I always knew he was talented. You know what I mean? But now that we have a, a platform we're trying to build up and stuff like that, I checked out the whole project and I found a new level of like respect for what he do. Mm. You know what I mean? And I can and I can rock with it. You know what I mean? Like I, I get it. I get Rod Wave. I have a 
a high level of understanding for music and stuff like that. But like being that, it, it's just a whole bunch of stuff. It's just a whole bunch of stuff that I don't want to. It's a long answer, kind of. Yeah. You know what I mean? But but um, one thing I took from this dog just understanding that Rod Wave is just like. I feel like one of the best lyricists out right now. Mm. You know what I mean? Outside yeah. of his, outside of how he crafted songs, outside of how he structured them, outside of him being able to sing better than most of these rappers nice. out here, he got better lyrics. Bro, it's dope that you say that because you know what made me think that he was going to go far was when he was 16, he dropped a song called Heartbreak Hotel, explaining as a 16-year-old that I don't want to go there with you because I don't like to get too attached. Like, like as a 16 year old, you don't think like that. You just, right, 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 right. You just hurt the girl feeling and move yeah, on yeah, with somebody yeah, else. Yeah. And I'm like, damn, this little nigga put all this together so poetically, this nigga might have something. Like yeah. he's talented as a writer, you know what I'm saying? But go on, yeah, I, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I just connected yeah, 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 with that yeah, moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, yeah, I see it. I know it's, what you it's, mean. It's evident, bro. Like, um, I wanted to kind of like read some of his lyrics and just, but. I don't know if I should. Um, well, I jotted down a little a little part of a song that go I, ahead, I go like ahead, it too. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, okay, the song is um, damn, what's the song called? Is it What is Love? Is it called What is Love? On or this what's, album? Yeah, it's on this album. Is it, is it called What is Love or What's Love? And it's, I like the I like the pills and bills too. That was so hard, bro. <laughs> Money hard can't too. buy you love, but it can buy you drugs. And he just talking about how niggas just get fucked up of of like you get all the money. You know what I mean? You think that's going to get you love, but you end up just buying drugs with it. Like, mm. nigga, just so hard. To get, a, to get a feeling, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's hard. Um, What's I, love right here? Yeah, I liked it, the part where he said, um, I know it, I remembered it, because it was so hard to I me. Mean, he was like, um, baby girl, like, um, liquor with no chaser, hard broke because a broke nigga played her. Now she looking for a rich nigga to save her, but rich niggas, bitch niggas that got paper. <laughs> Oh, this little nigga so hard, bro. <laughs> yeah, that bitch is hard right Rod there, bro. Nigga, bro. Rod yeah, yeah, that yeah. nigga, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two five. Two five, dog. Um, what's the, what's the, what's some of the shit? I just want to show his lyrical ability. I just want to just just open up something and just show his lyrical ability, dog. Like my boy come out this bitch conversating with mama. She say I'm in too deep until my niggas rich and free. It's hard for me to get some sleep. It's hard for me to get some peace with all this. Shit that I've been battling So many ups and downs Sometimes I feel like I can't balance it It's challenging So many challenges <laughs> <laughs> What the fuck Bars, So many challenges nigga. Oh father It's safe to um, Say times harder And he say Times get harder My pop say Son Be smarter You're an artist And a father This nigga just so Hard Every every bar is, It's not No throwaway bars No throwaway yeah. bars Nothing to just fill in Every every line They got a purpose I, I think that's what What catches people By Rod Why the people Who don't get them Like What are you talking About he playing It's because you gotta Just hear the words Because it's gonna be A part in every song some lyric, not necessarily the hook, but it's gonna be some lyric in every song that connects you to the whole song that make you run that bitch back. Like I gotta get to that yeah. part again. You know what I'm saying? My aunt say not. My aunt say not be smarter. You a target, irregardless. You a leader to them people, and them young niggas is watching. Them young niggas believe in you. Don't don't let them down. Be cautious. <laughs> no. Nigga going in like yeah, no more. Hey, what hey. <laughs> well, say um. Hope you hope you hope you don't think cause I got changed that what made me change is just that life got so strange I had to switch lanes. Niggas pulled up in and I be outside. I'm laid in the cut like peroxide. peroxide. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that. I <laughs> laid in the cut like peroxide. Hey man, uh, I vowed to be on the front line when shots fired. I was out of time that that night when Blink died. Bro. Brock died? Yeah. Okay. I, like he don't say it on the album, but he just dropped a video for this yesterday, he and in the video, he say Brock. Okay. I, I noticed that, though. He did it on another album. Like, he cut the nigga name out. Like, I don't know if he got issues with the nigga family, because I think later on in this verse, he go on to say, they, I wish we was on speaking terms when you died, so maybe oh, his, okay. his family might have said, mm. keep my brother's name out your I music, you. nigga. I you know you. what I'm saying? Standing in church, blurry eye <laughs> that I had to confess. I see my nigga laid to rest in his Sunday best. Polo, on, Polo head to chest, not his, not that's casket fresh, which we would have seen eye to eye before you left. Man, and this on top of the nigga just having a beautiful voice and structure how he go, how he go through the verse with these dope lyrics. Bro, you know a nigga. Why got, is why is Rod Wave not bigger? Um, that's I think that's kind of what it is. Like, cause his songs aren't um immediately catchy, so you have to hear the lyrics and connect with the lyrics before you realize how dope the song is. Like, he don't make. Bubblegummy catchy me. I think Heart for Sale was kind of catchy. 
But everything else, you kind of just felt that shit. Like, so I think people who aren't taking the time like to feel it, may it, they may miss it. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And that's why he got so many people saying, "Damn, I would sleep on him." My girl's the same way. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like when we like earlier in our relationship, when we when we was um. You know, like you'll have your artists and she'll have her artists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. you just go back and forth. Like, nobody want to hear that. Hers was Meg and yeah, mine yeah. was Raw. And we used to argue about who better. <laughs> and the last time I sent her something, like, I, I eventually stopped doing it because she liked Raw now. But I sent her something like two months back of a fan at Raw Wave show, like, what I do you miss? Me? Like, screaming <laughs> and like crying. Like, heavy That's another tears. thing, too, dog. Real quick, I don't mean to cut you off, but um, something I noticed too, like, uh, up under the Breakfast Club comment, everybody was saying how a lot of people were saying how they would sleep on them. And they yeah. did, even though just the interview, just you should check the interview out because like people saw the interview and they dealt for Charlemagne and them and they left Rod Wave fans just off the interview. Because a lot of young niggas don't got sense and it's kind of clear he got sense. Mm-hmm. Um, he just gave some dope insight on things on how you. 